Have you ever looked up at a porch ceiling and wondered why it's painted a light shade of blue? That color is called haint blue, and there's a story behind it. Well, a few stories. Haint blue is rooted in the African oral tradition of the Gullah Geechee. The Gullah Geechee people are descendants of African slaves brought to Charleston in the late 1500s. And today, nearly 500,000 Gullah Geechee people inhabit the 500 mile stretch between Jacksonville, North Carolina and Jacksonville, Florida. Many Gullah traditions and beliefs are still being practiced today. And one of them is painting their doors haint blue in order to ward off evil spirits also referred to as haints. We talked to Kim Johnston, author of Haint Blue, The Rockford Haunting, to find out more on the spiritual aspects of Haint Blue. Haint Blue color of paint is one that is uh, particularly prevalent in the Southern history, the, the folklore of the area. A lot of people think that this is a misspelling of the word haunt, mm -hmm. but it's not. Haint is an actual word that they came up with in their language to describe this spirit that uh, was in between the world of the living and dead, something that was very angry. Their belief was that they couldn't cross water though. So this particular blue color, it's many different shades uh, of color of blue, but uh, anything that appeared to be water-like in its color would be used to paint the windowsills, the doors, the porches, uh, to prevent the haints from coming in. But as the haint blue tradition made its way from the low country to Alabama and the rest of the South, it evolved into something else. Here, haint blue was not just a repellent for evil spirits, but rather had more earthly applications. We traveled to Greensboro, Alabama, where we met with Ian Crawford to learn more about porches, paint, and the practical uses of haint blue. One of the key things to understand is what people had when they were building and paints in the 19th century were different than the uh, paints that you get at Lowe's Home Depot today. They would have used lime-based paint and there's uh, a range of hues and pigments that were available. One of the stories of why ceilings are painted blue is uh, for insects and they said well it would confuse the insects because they'd think it was the sky and they wouldn't build their nests up there, they wouldn't go up there. And uh, in a sense that that seems to work because a lot of people say oh I painted my porch ceiling blue and I didn't have the insects. But um, insects see color in a different wavelength than we do, uh, so I don't think that they thought it was the sky so much as the lime in, the lime-based paint uh, is poisonous to uh, insects. Yeah. So if they did go up there, they didn't stay there for very long. So it was like accidental bug exactly. repellent. Exactly, it, it, it was 19th century uh, uh, insect repellent, and so um, it protected the wood, and even years later after that paint is gone, it's still in there, and mm. so it's a wonderful preventative. Um, you'll find a lot of old houses that had a lot of coats of lime-based paint uh, protect from termites, from all sorts of other, other insects as well. Hydrated lime is also called calcium hydroxide. This substance was mixed with water and sprayed over plants as a basic pesticide for many years, and for a time, it was used in paints. In the Natural Paint book by Lynn Edwards and Julia Lawless, lime wash and lime paint are both described as having mild antiseptic and insect repellent qualities. They also provide a vapor permeable finish that lets buildings breathe, preventing dampness, condensation, and mold growth. In other words, a perfect and very practical paint to use in the extreme humidity and bugginess of the South. But what's keeping this old porch folk practice alive? Paint isn't made with lime anymore, and for better or worse, pesticides have come a long way since this tradition began. Yet the practice continues, and it seems as if many don't really know why. But who's keeping the story going and how? People like Keith Sherrill at the Haint Blue Brewery in Mobile. I'm an Alabama native. I was living in Washington. I was in the Army for a very long time, and there came a time when I wasn't going to do that anymore. So uh, I had the idea of opening a brewery and moving south. Top five houses I was looking at had a Haint Blue port ceiling. And my wife actually mentioned uh, that I had a story. Sometime that evening, I was trying to find the end of the internet and figure out why these port ceilings were blue and came across haint blue. And that led into some later eureka moment of that's it. You know, when I was trying to figure out what haint blue was uh, and how colloquially Southern it was, uh, it had to be the name uh, of this brewery. In true folklore fashion, it came with it people traveled, yeah. and storytelling. Yeah. And, and, and this story, like the conversation we're having now would almost ensure that it lives, uh, outlives me. Yeah. Like it's this 
elegant color that everyone puts on their porch, but it's more than that at the same time. You know, it's, it's, it's multi-dimensional. The same thing is, is for the South. Like it's elegant, it's romantic, but just under the surface, there's a lot more to that. There's a lot more stories and, and Hank Blue is, is the same way and it doesn't make sense anywhere else. I think Southern people are the only people that would latch onto this story in this way. You know what I mean? We're kind of suspect of outsiders and other things. And, and that's what this hain is. It's like unwanted spirit that we didn't invite. And we keep them away with a beautiful, elegant color on our front porch. Like there's nothing more Southern than that. Like so many things in the South, Hain Blue has a story that's complex. A spiritual practice of a once enslaved people has now become a folk practice of an entire region. And while some may or may not buy into one story more than another, there's no denying that a Hain Blue ceiling makes a sit on the porch much more pleasant.